Hi, my name is Lee Engelston. Uh, I recently created a bit of a proof of concept showing like a, a sphere with uh, where the uh, user is surrounded by images in augmented reality using Xamarin, C Sharp, .NET and ARKit. I uh, put it on Twitter and a few people were wondering how I managed to do it so I just thought I would uh, do a short recording and look at the code and share that. And all this code is available online on a website I'll talk about later but I thought I would just step through through the code and the approach. So this is the effect uh, that we're after. It's actually um, just a few rows of, of images, 2D planes, and I'm going off and calling the Unsplash API. And then when it comes back from that, I'm just updating each of these blank 2D planes with, with the image. And you get this nice this sphere effect because what I'm doing for each of those seven rows I'm changing the radius slightly to make it look like a sphere and I'm also angling them all automatically towards a central invisible node and that's all handed for you so you don't have to worry about any awkward uh, angles or not too much anyway it's nice uh, it's quite a nice effect so that's cute right okay so the code Okay, um, so I've hidden some of the, or minimized some of the boilerplate code. Uh, I'll just go through some of the relevant code. You'll need, first of all, you'll need an Unsplash API key. Uh, put your own there, you can't use mine. Uh, then I've got a uh, list of image plane nodes. Those are these, these initially blank uh, 2D uh, planes, which I, I then update with uh, the images and when I get it. And then these, this is a, a thread safe collection of actual UI images that I, I actually populate the 2D nodes with. Um, I had a bit of, I originally used a list, but because I'm using uh, a background thread, or sorry, a separate thread, I was, I was finding it, it wasn't working very well, but so I used this concurrent bag, which I've never used before, and it just seemed to work. Uh, so right, this image plane node, let's go see what that is, because that's quite important. Okay, so this image plane node class that I've got that inherits from um, scene node, which is a uh, just something that comes from scene kit. It's like a the base class basically, uh, and then in the constructor, I'm I'm setting the opacity to be at twenty percent, so pretty transparent to begin with. Uh, then I'm also setting the geometry to be uh, this um, create this plane object of, of a width and height that I'm passing in. I'm setting the material just to be white to begin with uh, and set it double sided. And then later on, I'll call this update image method with the actual uh, image and update the contents of that 2D plane to be not just a plain color, but the actual image. And then I'm saying fade in the opacity from 20% to 100% uh, over a second. So that's the image plane node. Okay, then I've got a few variables here. I've got this global variable for the center node, which I'm gonna place at the world origin, which is right in the middle where the user begins and have all the other nodes pointing in towards it. Then I've got um, the image width of, of what's effectively 30 centimeters because a value of one, and these are floats by the way, Hence the F, um, the, the value of one is one meter, so 0 0.3 will be 30 centimeters, 0 0.2, 20 centimeters. So we get a nice sort of two by three aspect ratio. And then one centimeter effectively between each each image margin I'm using. And I've got my search term of cats, which and you can use your own search term. You can think whatever you want. Okay. This is where the, um, the magic happens really, it's pretty, boilerplate but that's where the actual augmented reality scene sort of starts uh, and you're in instructing the app to just start the could be augmented then uh, do, 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 I've got a radius here which is how far I want the 2d planes to be to be from the center in this case it's 1.25 meters then I've got the number of images I want in each row which I've gone for 21 slightly arbitrary just spacing worked out that way and then I, I make a, a note that I'm going to be using seven rows of images because uh, I want to know that I need to go off and get seven times 21 to 
images and, and display them. Then we're creating the center node that we talked about earlier. That is just a plain bog standard known, uh, node and uh, it's invisible effectively. I'm setting it at 000, which is right at the center where, where the, the camera is when you first start the app or, or the world origin uh, and adding that to the scene. Then I'm creating seven rows of images with 21 images on each row. Uh, when I first set out, I just had this one row all the way around. Uh, and then I went and did and said, and said, oh, actually go create me a row below that and go create me a row above that and then another one, another one and uh, reduce the radius ever so slightly to give this sort of tapered effect to effect effectively get the, the node, sorry, the, the um, sphere effect that you can actually see. So let's look at what a blank, add blank row is doing. So in the add blank row, I'm saying for each side, so for, to go iterate through this 21 times effectively, create this image plane node, which is blank. Remember it's white to begin with, with 20% opacity. Uh, and then this is a slight bit of maths, which I looked up online as to how you calculate the X and Y coordinates of the uh, the corners of an um, inside a polygon. So if you were doing this for a square, we'd get we'd, we'd go around four times and get the, the coordinates of the um, the different corners. And if it was a triangle, there'd be three. And this is just a twenty-one sided shape, effectively. Uh, and then y, which is up and down, up vertically, and passing in. We start off with zero and minus and the plus to go lower and above, respectively. Uh, so that's setting the x, y, z coordinates. And then for each of the 2D planes, I'm setting something called a constraint, which is quite cool. I'm saying for each of these 2D nodes, always look at this center node. And that works out some of the angles that I don't have to. So it's just always going to be looking at the, the center node, which is quite cool. Uh, and then add that to the list of image planes and add it to the scene as well. Scrolling back up after I've got my seven blank rows. I then in a separate thread, because I don't want to block the UI thread, I say go off and get me a list of image URLs. This is just a list of strings uh, from the Unsplash API. Uh, so let's go see what that's doing. Now I worked out that you can only get 30 images at a time back from the Unsplash API. So I have to call this five times to effectively get the sufficient number of images to, to populate that sphere. So that's the URL I'm putting up together, passing in the access key, uh, what are the parameters in there, the search term, landscape, that sort of thing. Getting that back and getting the URLs and doing that, um, adding it to an array a list and then converting that to array. And I should have about 147 or 150 images after that. I think if my math's right. Then once I have got those lists of URLs, I'm saying for each of those URLs, the code could be better by the way, this is just a proof of concept, this is not production code. Um, for each of those URLs, go and actually load the image to get me the actual image download it and store it as a rare bytes and then actually convert it to UI images, what, what scene kit uses, or UI kit. Uh, da, 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 da. Go add that in my um, concurrent bag of images. And then what I want to do is on the back on the UI thread, I say go and update that node with that image, iterating through that. Uh, and that's it. I think I've gone through all the code. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Smashing, great. So uh, this is uh, that effect again. This time with the search term beach, which is a lot my sp a lot more th my thing. This a lot more relaxing. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've got nothing against cats. I've got two, but I'd much rather be on the beach. So it sort of fades in. It's the call to the Unsplash API is quite fast. Um, it's quite good. And then I can walk outside this sphere uh, and look at it from the outside as well. Okay, now if you want to try this yourself, um, you could jump right in and use the code 
uh, that I've just shown you or you could look at a website that I've created for you just you um, where I've sort of gone through little steps at a time of how to do tiny tiny atomic building blocks of how to do certain things in Xamarin, in AF, Hit and C Sharp um, little things like how do I put a single sphere in the scene what are the different shapes I can use how do I put an image on a 2D plane um, all sorts of uh, 3D models, face detection, physics, um, and each one of these, if you click into them, you will get, it's probably a bit zoomed out there, can I get that bigger? No. Um, a bit of a description of what I was trying to achieve, um, a bit of a video of me messing around normally. Uh, so this is me using, trying out the, the facial tracking, sorry, facial expression recognition stuff that's just built into ARKit, which is quite cool. And when it detects a different uh, facial expression, change the mesh, which it automatically will overlay if you want it to, uh, to a different color. So here I'm saying, um, if my left or right eyes are wide, then change the face color to be green. So it's just messing around with it like that. I get to learn how to do uh, different things. So uh, go check out Xamarin ARKit. XamarinARKit.com. I recommend it because the documentation of how to use ARKit and augmented reality in Xamarin is is a bit sparse. There's a lot of documentation of how to use ARKit using Xcode and in Swift and an Objective C, but there's not much in how to do it in .NET. And this is sort of what I'm trying to put together is a bit of a collection of, of code samples that other people can can learn from uh, things I've been trying out. Uh, so yeah, that's that's XamarinARKit.com. My own personal website is ManchesterDeveloper.com if you want to go check that out and see what other projects I'm working on. Uh, and I'm on Twitter at uh, LeeEngleston.com as well if you want to see uh, me, what I'm up to on there and follow me. Smashing great walk. Thank you very much for your time. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and uh, goodbye. <laughs>